morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my thanks to Governor Healy, Secretary Howe, and Secretary Walsh for being here today. It is, it is just truly an honor to welcome you here to Brigham and Women's Hospital. Across Mass General Brigham, our mission is clear. It's to provide exceptional patient care, advance research and innovation, educate the next generation of healthcare leaders, and support the communities we serve. Brigham and Women's Hospital has a long legacy of leadership in women's health, helping women live longer, healthier lives through cutting edge research and clinical care. It is that research infused clinical care that we are so proud of across all of Mass General Brigham. The department of OBGYN here at the Brigham has been ranked as number one in the country by US News and World Report for the past two years, number one in the country. It is an amazing achievement. We are so proud of the incredible work that goes on here every single day and the people who do it. I am so pleased that you are all able to experience the impact of our mission firsthand as you visited our neonatal ICU, our labor and delivery unit, and spoke with our world-class clinicians and researchers in women's health. It is work that the governor, I know you are committed to so much, and I want to acknowledge and applaud the deep commitment you have shown to life sciences and economic development through the Mass Leads Act which will reinvest in the Massachusetts Life Science Center and launch a new phase of the Life Science Initiative. This really builds on the successes that the state has fostered with healthcare leaders over the past 15 years, including the incredible role that Massachusetts institutions played during the COVID-19 pandemic. I lived through it. You all lived through it. It was profound. It was impressive. We got it done and that collaborative effort that we are celebrating every day to bring the ARPA-H Investor Catalyst Hub to Massachusetts, it succeeded. It was a triumph. And again, we are so proud to have been part of that. There are now several Mass General Brigham projects, including work by Dr. Jaffe, Dr. Spagnola of the Connor Center for Women's Health and Gender Biology have applied for ARPA-H funding, and we are so grateful for the administration's continued prioritization of research and innovation. It defines us, and as I mentioned earlier, it leads to that incredible care, that incredible care that is so informed by research and innovation that so defines the importance of health care and its reputation across the country based here in Massachusetts. So opportunities like this are critical for the future and the competitiveness of Massachusetts, so important for us as a state. Competitiveness, innovation, and equity are key themes in the governor's economic development bill. And these are the actual areas where Mass General Brigham makes significant contributions. They are part of our core mission thanks to our incredible teams of world-class clinicians and scientists delivering care and driving innovation. And that link between innovation and care is really what we are all about every day. We are also, it's also important to mention, and, and this is a fact, and I know you've heard it, but I like to keep emphasizing it. Mass General Brigham is the largest hospital system research enterprise in the US with an annual research budget that exceeds $2.4 billion, and more than 300 health, biotech, and medical device companies were created from the people here at Mass General Brigham. It's just a profound tribute to all of you and the incredible support and linked vision of Mass General Brigham and the administration. We are also investing hundreds of millions of dollars to improve health in the communities we serve, by providing accessible, equitable, and innovative community-based care. We know about our capacity challenges. We live them every single day. Access is so important. Access is also equity. Four years ago, we launched a United Against Racism strategy designed to drive more equitable health care, support the communities we serve, and create an inclusive workplace culture and environment free from racism. 
Our work to build more equitable patient care is focused on key conditions that contribute to premature death and inequities, and they include maternal fetal health, very much aligned with what we have seen today. We are determined to reduce disparities and drive more equitable care for mothers. These are data-driven decisions. These are broad programs working with, partnering with the communities we serve and the state and everyone around us. We are all in this together. So I want to thank our Mass General Brigham physicians, nurses, advanced practice providers, researchers, educators, caregivers, all of the staff for the work that goes on, the work that you all do every day, every minute in service to our patients and our missions. So again, welcome. Thank you all for being here today. And I am so pleased to now welcome to the podium Governor Maura Healy. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne, and congratulations to you and the MGB team. Um, you named so many of the relevant parts, and there are so many others, too, uh, that, that comprise MGB. And today, we're here. Um, excited to have the opportunity to see so much of the innovation that Ann just spoke of in action, in practice. And so um, thank you very much for hosting our administration on this visit today. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, colleagues, including our colleagues in government, Senator Br Will Brownsberger, who is here today. Um, as, in addition, we have members of our team in the administration. So our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe is here, Under Secretary for Economic Foundations, Ashley Stolba. We have Jean LeClaire, who is the acting CEO of the Mass Life Sciences Center today, which is the organization, the body that made the awards that we're going to talk about a little bit. And we have our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh. So I want to thank them and their teams for the work that they do. I also want to thank the doctors, the researchers, the nurses, the staff, of the Connor Center. As I said, we just had the opportunity to tour, and it's incredible to see all of what is going on. Dr. Joppe, thank you so much for taking us through. Uh, and to Megan, thank you very much for taking us through just a little while ago. Uh, <clears throat> so we're here today to talk about one of the most fundamental core strengths of our state, innovation, research, and particularly when it comes to life sciences and healthcare. Our leadership in this space is unparalleled. We're the global hub of life sciences. But today is about reaffirming that and making sure that we don't lose any ground and that you all have, particularly the award recipients, the resources and the tools that you need to do what you want to do, which is to help change lives and yield better health outcomes. We're also here today, it's the start of Black Maternal Health Week. And I think it's particularly important that we be here in this moment to talk about our shared commitment to addressing real health disparities, particularly when it comes to maternal health. And I appreciate the work that so many have done and are doing to address these racial disparities. You know, here in our city and in our state, we want to do everything we can to eliminate those disparities. They shouldn't exist. They shouldn't exist in any realm but particularly in healthcare. And I know that through the work of so many in this room and colleagues beyond in this wonderful ecosystem that is Massachusetts Life Sciences, we have the power and the wherewithal to get that done, working with community. And a special shout out too to our doulas um, who are right and mesh with the community and doing, thank you, the, uh, the critically important work. So today we're talking about a bill uh, that we filed, economic development. It's important. Uh, we'll hear more about that. But basically, you know, this is, this is legislation that's going to help us with cutting edge medical research, um, with advancing health equity, which is a shared mission, and by working directly with our researchers and our institutions here in Massachusetts. One of the great synergies we have is also with the private sector. And I heard a lot today about the work that you all do together with the private sector. And that is important. That is critically important um, as, as we think about how to nurture this ecosystem going forward. And it's also why Massachusetts leads. I appreciate the work that was done. And Chris Coburn, thank you very much um, for your leadership here as well. 
so many people came together last year when the Biden administration, which has done a fantastic job, by the way, on health care, on maternal health, leading into so much of what you care about, including funding for innovation and science. And as governor, I am grateful to the many different grants and awards our administration has received, whether it's for education or energy or infrastructure or here when it comes to health care and science. We had an opportunity to compete last year for ARPA-H, and assembling this team of um, so many talented people in the state, under the leadership of Secretary Howe and her team, we were able to become that investor catalyst hub, and we're so proud of that. That's because we had a team that included the greatest hospitals and life science companies in the world, and the greatest workers and researchers and uh, practitioners. We also um, know that, uh, the First Lady was here in, in just a few months ago to announce a $100 million investment in women's health, which is really, really exciting. So the Mass Life Sciences Initiative, critical to our state, we propose further uh, reauthorization of that. We know that what was done in the past has already been used to leverage $6 billion in private investment. We now have 18 of the 20 largest biopharma companies in the world here in Massachusetts. We're gonna go chase the other two. Um, <laughs> But, but we, know, we know how to set ourselves up for success because we've done it before. We need to make a similar investment right now. And uh, I'm very, very excited about that. So today, I'm also pleased to announce that we have an additional $3 million in new grant awards through the Women's Health Project. And we'll start with the first look awards, which are administered together with the Connors Center. These grants will support early stage research that advances our understanding of diseases and conditions that disproportionately affect women. Five researchers, each receiving $50,000, include Dr. Natalie Feldman to pilot a digital mental health intervention for postpartum anxiety. Thank you. Um, I should say from Brigham and Women's. Um, Dr. Anahita Dua um, for her work addressing thrombosis in elderly patients with peripheral artery disease. <laughs> Dr. you? Oh, good. Where's Dr. Shook? Dr. Lydia Shook. Hey, oh, great, great. To better understand how pregnancies are complicated by type 1 diabetes. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> and Dr. Marianne Lafer. Hey, all right. To develop molecular imaging for non-invasive diagnosis of endometriosis. Yeah. And where's Dr. Christina Bailey Heithel from WPI, Worcester Polytech Institute? She is developing treatment for bipolar disorder affecting women during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So this is um, this is this super exciting. Thank you all for what you do. The second group of awards is the Mass Life Sciences Center Women's Health Innovation Program. And these go to institutions to advance projects that are showing real promise. They range from new technologies to better understand pregnancy risks, less invasive screenings for cervical cancer, better medicine delivery for ovarian cancer, and so much more. This year, the winners include Mass General Hospital, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Tufts Medical Center, Tufts University, Harvard University, Northeastern University, McLean Hospital, and Boston Children's Hospital. And we have a few of the researchers here today, Dr. Emily Lau and Dr. Stacy Gruber. Thank you for representing our awardees. So congratulations, and I just wanna say on a personal note, um, I guess maybe, uh, is just to recognize that we have not done what we needed to do for women's health for centuries, right? And I am so psyched as your governor that people are actually looking at this and dealing with this um, because it is different. And for too long, the model was for a particular uh, sort or type. And we know that over half the population, uh, including here in Massachusetts, doesn't necessarily you know, um, relate in the same way, right? <laughs> nor do the things that were given and you know treatments were administered and everything else. So it's just to say, I really appreciate the focus. You have the full support of our administration on this, uh, not just for women's health, but also when it comes to addressing 
uh, disparities that we see, particularly along racial lines, where you know there's so much more that we can do, that we're invested in doing as a team, working with great institutions like MGB and our wonderful healthcare partners all across the state. So thank you, and I hope um, it's never enough, but it's something that money, right? I hope it yeah. it, it shows to you. <laughs> No, the value that we all uh, place in all of you and the importance of the research that you do and our belief that we know it will change lives and what a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you very much for that. And uh, now I'd like to bring up our Secretary of Economic Development. This is the person in our state who's responsible for driving economic development and growth. And she's doing a fantastic job. We're leaning into a lot of different areas, applied AI, climate tech, really, really important and uh, life sciences. So I, I bring before you now Secretary Von Howe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Governor, uh, for uh, all of that inspiration and for all your support. Um, it is such an honor to be here with you all today. I talk a lot about uh, what a privilege it is to be in this role, and most of all because we have such an awesome team here in Massachusetts. We have the best legislators with Senator Brownsburg and all of his colleagues. We have the best cabinet with folks like Secretary Walsh, the best team members um, like Under Secretary Ashley Stolba, the best quasi-leaders like Gene, and most of all, we have all of you here. Um, we are so lucky in our state, and I will tell you, um, I started this job uh, in January of 2023. It's my first time in state government. My whole life up until then was actually in the private sector, although I was on the board of another hospital, which we won't name, uh, but so I know a little bit about, about healthcare, and I, and I was the CEO and CFO of an online pharmacy, so I know the challenges and complexities of healthcare, but I started this job in January, and as the governor said, my job is to work on economic development. So I'm a data person, so I, I like to look at data, and so I started looking at data, I said, wait a minute, Shouldn't we, meet with, shouldn't we meet with Mass General Brigham? Because they're our biggest employer. And our team was like, well, we really, we haven't done a lot with them in the past because, you know, they're a hospital, they're just regulated by HHS. And I was like, no, no, we should meet, we should meet with them. So I'm, we, uh, the governor I met with Ann, uh, with Dr. Klebanski, and I will tell you the same thing that we told her that day, which is number one, thank you so much. I know you probably don't hear that enough because um, you know we kind of take it for granted. You're here, you're probably not gonna move. Other companies can pick up and move. You're probably not gonna move, but we still are so grateful and we don't take it for granted. You are a jewel in our state. Any other state would kill to have you there. And so we want to say number one, thank you. And the second thing we said is, now how can we work together? What do you need from us? How can we partner together to help make MGB even more awesome and help make our state even more awesome? So I really wanna say thank you. And there's so many different things I wanna point out on thanking you. So first is, from an economic growth standpoint, you are our biggest employer, 82,000 employees. That is a lot of people working hard every day. So you also, through things, uh, so I met with Chris Coburn right after that. He gave me this economic report on the impact of Mass General Brigham. Over the last couple of years, you've generated $54 billion in economic impact. It's almost as, the same as our state budget for the whole year. So, and you also, as, um, as uh, Dr. Klemansky was saying, you are the number one in terms of research, you're the number one in terms of the rankings. We are so lucky to have you as an economic growth driver here in our state. The second thing is, um, you know, I just wanna highlight this and maybe embarrass Chris a little bit, but you know, Dr. Klemansky was saying that you were part of the ARPA-H award. I mean, everyone is part of a team. That's very kind that you said that. But, <laughs> but really, Chris and, and National Brigham, you helped captain this team. We would not have won this, um, this very competitive um, hub from President Biden without National Brigham really leaning in with our state and with all the people in our ecosystem. There are so many late nights, so many weekends with Chris, his whole team, Joe Sullivan and Gene from the Life Sciences Center and from everybody in our ecosystem. And it was competitive, as the governor said. California was very upset. North Carolina was very upset. <laughs> Many states were very upset, but we won, because when we work together, especially with people captaining us like Mass General Brigham, we win. And one of the reasons why it was so important to highlight Mass General Brigham as part of our ARPA H bid is that we sometimes, when we talk about life sciences, we think about all the cool drugs, all the big life sciences companies, all the big brands that you've heard of, and th that is definitely true. We are so proud to have the 18 of the top 20. But where do those come from? We would not have any of those companies here. We would not have our success in life sciences without our hospital systems, especially National Brigham. You are the goose that has laid these golden eggs for us, and we do not take that for granted. So thank you so much for helping to lead our ARPA-H bid and also to really um, to spawn this incredible leadership we have in life sciences. The other thing I will just say um, to thank you all is that um, I don't take it for granted. 
uh, you know, there's a lot of, you can get lost in the numbers and the GDP and the big federal wars and all that. At the end of the day, this is about taking care of humans, taking care of people and their families. And it's hard work and it's gotten harder post pandemic. It's really difficult. There's a ton of burnout. There's a ton of issues everyone's facing. And to be able to walk the NICU and see these tiny little babies and how much you're taking care of them here in the Connor Center, named after our friend Jack's uh, mom, is really, really special. And I will just say on a personal note, my mother-in-law was a NICU nurse. She, um, she started having some symptoms of some things that weren't that great. So we moved her from Chicago to Boston and we took her to Mass General Brigham and she got diagnosed with Alzheimer's um, 10 years ago. She, so I, I will still remember sitting in the lobby and, and uh, waiting for the doctor to come down and how incredibly kind they were to us and to her. And last month she passed away after 10 years of fighting Alzheimer's. And one of the first things to appear in our house after she passed away was a letter from Mass General Brigham, sending the condolences, but also with details around things that we should be thinking about, how to you know, plan, how to you know, think about services for our family. So Mass General Brigham has been there from the beginning to the end, and you do that every day for so many families and patients, not just in our state, but from around the world who come here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, this is why you all represent why this Mass Leads Act is so important. Um, you have been a leader. You do this incredible work. You helped us win ARPA-H, but this is not the time to rest. This is not the time to hang out. This is not the time to just kind of coast. We are living in very complex times. Lots of states, lots of other hospitals are trying to be very competitive. And as the governor and, and Dr. Klemanski pointed out, there is still so much more work to do. There are still so much more to do in terms of curing disease. There's so much more to do in terms of equity. We know here in our state, even in our state, as awesome as we are, between here and Roxbury is a two mile difference. It's a 23 year life expectancy difference. We also know that in, there's still so much inequity in healthcare. And we're here today to talk about these amazing grants. So we've given over $20 million of grants uh, over the last many years at Mass Life Sciences just focused on women's health. So before the, the First Lady and the President got into this, we, we knew this was an issue. <laughs> and I chair the Mass Life Sciences Board, and we had a full board meeting dedicated to looking at this Nature article. I'd encourage you to all look at it. It's from 2023. It's a Nature article. Carla, I think you, you led this discussion. It's a very complicated article, lots of bubbles. But essentially, <laughs> essentially what it boils down to is if you look at every disease state that is mostly women, um, it is deeply underfunded. And if you look at every disease state that is mostly men, it is wildly overfunded. So for example, we know that ovarian cancer is the fifth most lethal in cancers. It only gets, it's only 12th in terms of funding. Prostate cancer is nowhere near as lethal. It gets way more funding. And so, this is time for, uh, for us to fix these. Congratulations to all the award winners. We're so grateful that we, you are doing this work here in our state, and we're so glad to support you with these First Look Awards. And we in Massachusetts, we lead. That's what we do. We solve big problems. And this Mass Leads Act, this $3.5 billion, is aimed at not just kind of doing things, things the same old, same old. This $3.5 billion and a billion of it for life sciences, and when we say life sciences, we mean all of healthcare. Life sciences, including the whole system. We are trying to be more ambitious, just like ARPA-H, and we want to solve these big, hard problems like all of these um, women's health issues. So this is the time for us to continue to lead. This is why this Mass Leads Act is so important. And thank you all so much. We're excited to work together with our legislative partners to get this done and to continue to work with all of you to do great things for not just our, your, your patients and our people in our state, but hopefully for the country and the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yvonne Secretary Howe. Um, I'm just really grateful to be here uh, to have a chance to say a few words, and I'm really just delighted to be back at the Brigham, especially uh, to celebrate the Connor Center for Women's Health. Um, long before it was popular, as you've heard, Brigham and Women's Hospital has been at the forefront of research, education, and comprehensive care and community-based care for women. I cannot emphasize enough how important these investments are to the Healy Driscoll administration and to, the, uh, to me as Secretary of Health and Human Services, especially as we think about our equity agenda. Before taking this job, I spent more years than I care to admit working in hospitals, even in, in this one. Um, <laughs> and I know firsthand that hospitals are much more than a place to receive care. Now that's really important and it's, and it's, and it's what brings everybody to work every day. But, but today's visit highlights the crucial problems that hospitals like Brigham and Women's are specifically on earth to solve. Hospital, you're, you're, you're not only a hospital, you're a research institution, you're a community partner, and you take care of people. And you drive the creation of new knowledge, which as you heard, drives the economy. And that impact isn't just felt locally, 
it's felt worldwide. You know, there's been a lot of talk about health systems in our state recently, one in particular, we'll pass on that. But, um, <laughs> but I think it can be really easy to lose sight of just how remarkable the healthcare ecosystem is in our state. We have the best talent in the world tackling some of the toughest challenges on earth right here at the Brigham, right across the river in Cambridge, and in, at world-class institutions all across our state. You guys have raised the bar, and other places are trying to, trying, to, trying to get over that bar. And we have a lot to be proud of when it comes to health innovation. But all that said, the fact still stands that not everybody, even in our own state, even in this neighborhood, reap the benefit of all these advances. In, in the United States, you've heard it said many times that your zip code is more predictive of your health than your genetic code. Our state, for all of its accomplishments, still has profound gaps in health outcomes for people of color in low-income communities. That's not news to anyone in this room or anyone who works in healthcare. But I hope you come away from today with an understanding that with Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor D Driscoll, and our entire team, we are going to eradicate that difference. And our maternal investments, our maternal health investments kind of lead the way. Uh, the Mass Leads Act is a great example. It's, this is across our administration. You know, Governor Healy talks about us as Team Massachusetts, and we really do work as a team. That's why I'm here today supporting my teammates. And we'll continue to work across every sector until we find, until we achieve the health outcomes that everyone in Massachusetts wants for themselves or for their family. We have world-class le leaders. We're an R for H hub. And now we, are, we, uh, we can ensure new chapters of health innovation that leave no patients behind. And now it's my great pleasure to turn things back to our governor, Governor Healy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just step up for a minute. I'm Will Brownsberger. I happen to have been born many years ago in this, uh, in one of the predecessors to this institution. And I, at this point, happen to be the state senator from this area. But I think these institutions are recognized by all legislators for their incredible importance to the whole region, not just even Massachusetts. Um, we approach this field with humility. There are some things that we do in the public sector that are sort of like our job, like, well, the MBTA uh, and <laughs> roads and school, public schools. Then there's other things where we know it's not exactly our job, it's your job, your leading. Um, and in, these, in those areas, what's so important, even more important than in our core business, is that we're listening and being guided by what you tell us needs to happen, what you tell us we need to do. And this governor's team, this governor and this governor's team are out here with that orientation, listening, trying to soak up how can we do it better? How can we support you better? And I just want to underline that um, I and all of us in the legislature approach it with the same spirit, and we're eager to hear from you and be as responsive as we can to your direction on how we can be helpful to your incredibly important mission. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm happy to, we're happy to take questions on topic. Otherwise, we're going to invite, uh, we'll conclude, and I would love to get a picture with all of our award recipients and the team, okay? If you want to come forward, thank you very much.